Ladies and gentlemen, this is Envoy of Kairos, back for another speed paint. And this time, I'm bringing you guys something huge that, uh, is a good combination of an experiment and a tribute. With the 31st anniversary coming up real fast, I absolutely had to make a tribute to our favorite blue blur, Sonic the Hedgehog. But... I've also really needed to experiment with doing better backgrounds. So, I decided to try and do a piece that references the entirety of Sonic 1. And so, I used Green Hill Zone as the foreground, and the general area surrounding Sonic himself, and then I used all five of the other zones as the background making for a very eventually obnoxiously detailed piece to give you an idea of just how bad this got. Almost 600 layers by the time I was done. I didn't even realize this until Photoshop started glitching and when I started new layers instead of numbering it as the latest unused number, it would just label it as whatever number I was actually at. So, you know, there were a couple of layers here and there that I would forget to name. It would normally just be for shading and lighting. And, you know, for most of the piece, it would only get up to 23. And then I finish this, and it goes all the way up to 588. So yeah, big piece. Very, very big piece. But frankly, I'm very happy with the results. Ecstatic, really. I've always been kind of terrible at backgrounds, and I desperately needed something to push me to change that. And I feel like this is a very big step forward. So to start, I have how I handled Green Hill Zone. And I wanted to make sure I represented the best of every version of Green Hill Zone. And the one thing that gets altered the most is most definitely the totem poles. So I ended up making a sort of custom design that uses aspects of the generations and original designs. So, more of the, uh, I'd say more rounded and detailed versions used in Generations, but using faces and patterns and colors that are more of a reference to the original. So, overall, that turned out quite well. I even like how I managed to uh, create a texture that really represents the wood grain on that. And then, moving on from there, we go to Marble Garden. Marble Garden Zone is... It's definitely the most understated of them, but there's just so much of the level that's entirely underground that there wasn't too much I could really do. And... Ugh, frankly, Marble Garden was one stage I absolutely hated every time I played the original game. So, the less time spent on it, the better, frankly. <laughs> but, I... I do enjoy the final result for the temple up top. I did a lot of back and forth between windows referencing the original sprite work. And overall, I feel like it came out pretty accurate. And then, of course, texturing the lava was a quick but fun experiment. The most obnoxious thing, though, was definitely lighting and shading all of the carved stone on the cliff faces. That was, uh, yeah, that was a pain. 
But then we move on to Spring Yard Zone. And, well, Spring Yard was definitely a more entertaining stage for me back in the original title. Its music was always just a little jovial. Although, I must say, I will always prefer Casino Night Zone to it. Regardless, there's a lot of very eclectic elements to Spring Yard Zone that made it interesting to try and represent here. A shockingly wide variety of colors that really... Mm, it made representing this a little awkward because there were times where I felt like the color palette was a bit too diverse for the zone. The magenta, blue, and green of the pillars almost clashed with the orange, but once it was lit and shaded, it actually didn't feel so bad. Of course, the pillars aren't present for most of the piece, so it kind of helps. It's more of an accent. The most obnoxious thing for this stage, and moving forward with all of the remaining ones, would definitely be representing all of the patterns for all the blocked out portions of the levels. It's, uh... It gets more and more difficult as I go here. Labyrinth Zone was the first one to give me a real challenge. And oh boy, does it look like it by the end. Labyrinth Zone was always a pain in the ass of a level in the original title. And every time it's appeared since, it has continued to be a pain in the ass. I expect the same to happen with Sonic Origins next week. Although, I suppose when you're hearing this, it'll be the week of. As for representing Labyrinth Zone, well, I went out of my way to check all over the map and find all of the most crucial details to represent. You might notice I did the same with uh, Spring Yard Zone, but it was a little easier to find specific things to represent in Spring Yard, while Labyrinth gave a pretty wide variety of stuff and made it pretty difficult for me to choose. The one thing I will say about Labyrinth is, although it's definitely an obnoxious zone, it is a very scenic one. Eventually, I settled on picking a different major feature for each act. And making sure to accurately represent the various specialties and gimmicks of the stage. So I had to do the pulley platforms and the climb back out during the boss fight, throw some of the crystals in there and the uh, water slide entrance. Overall, when it was complete, the most obnoxious thing was texturing the rock and adding the patterns on some of the bricks. Then, we move on to Starlight Zone. The one that definitely... Definitely took me the longest. Yeah. Now, in between working on Labyrinth and Starlight, I did end up accidentally losing some save progress and having to redo the last layer of Labyrinth Zone. I made it quite close to the original version that I recorded, though, and maybe a bit better. Then, by the time I had finished that and gotten onto the labyrinth, I realized I had to basically redo the entire structuring of the level 
the original blocky shapes that I had used to represent it just didn't work. So I went and redid all of those and focused on getting a general shape of the different level layout pieces that I was using for it. Once I had managed to do that, the rest of it became pretty simple. Well, technically simple. In practice, not so much. There are a lot of prefabricated pieces that get moved around with production of this level. And... ended up producing a ridiculous number of layers, and I whittled them down and combined them as much as possible, but it was a complex one in the grand scheme of things. Regardless, I do quite like how it turned out and, you know, properly representing all of the different gimmicks, the return of the loops, because a lot of people don't realize there are only loops in Sonic 1 in Green Hill Zone and Starlight Zone. So I had to represent them here as well. Especially with the abundance of them and the number of them that just chain into each other in this zone. And then, of course, uh, I had to get the street lights in there and the uh, catapult things with the spike balls. I have one of those tucked up toward the top. The most obnoxious thing, though, was properly spacing out the texturing and all of the blockiness of it that had to be done from scratch to make it look properly chaotic enough. That took a while, but once I managed to get that down, I was satisfied with the level. And that brings us on to the final level, Scrap Brain Zone. Dear God, this stage was a nightmare back on the original. I got lost and looped through it quite a few times back then, but, you know, I was a 90s kid, early 90s. I was playing this relatively young. And, of course, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Eventually, I would go back years later and manage to complete it. Including getting all six Chaos Emeralds, because, yes, there were only six back in this title. And, uh, I'll admit, Scrap Brain is a difficult one to represent, particularly with all of the pipes in the foreground. Those get a little obnoxious. And then there's the eclectic number of traps scattered around, including the fire spitter traps, the buzz saws, the gravity barrels, the crushing pistons. It's a chaotic one. So there, there was a hell of a lot for me to try and represent here, and I had to not so much represent specific parts of the level and more of combine different parts of the level and make it look very deep compared to the others. In the end, I think it turned out pretty alright. The pipes turned out pretty good. The patterns throughout are consistent. Overall, uh, I'd say Scrap Brain is one of my least favorites of this whole setup, but I was running out of time. I really needed to complete this piece, and frankly, I can feel myself starting to get sick. I'm probably a bit sick as I record this right now. My throat's gonna hurt like hell by the time I finish recording today. But... Overall, I'm still very satisfied with the end results of all of this, particularly once I get the sky and the ocean and the foreground lighting done. Wonder how many of you will quickly spot the special zone reference that I fit in here. It was uh, a little difficult to manage to make it look natural, but I think it turned out pretty good. And you can fully expect that this will only be the first of many Sonic pieces I'll be doing. I'll take my time and do other smaller pieces in between, but for this one, yeah, this is just the beginning. 
you can expect a Sonic 2 piece, a Sonic CD, 3 and Knuckles, and so on moving forward. Uh, for 3 and Knuckles, I'll probably whittle it down to a couple of specific stages. And for CD, I am either going to stick to only present or future versions of stages. Well, good future versions. We'll see. For now, though, this is Envoy of Cairo signing out. And I'll see you all again in another two weeks for another speed paint. And then I'm going to start sketching pretty much immediately after I edit this video. Later, guys. And you better keep speeding on, you crazy blue bastard. I'll see you on Thursday. When we get back to your origins. And really make the best out of how it all started. Here's to hoping Frontiers can be as good as some of us still dare to hope.